Hi, everyone. Welcome to this last uh, conversation that we're going to have on critical media studies as a part of this particular uh, round of videos and discussion here. So this is what I have taken to calling the greater whole of critical media studies. So uh, what does that mean? Well, it it's, comes from an expression that, uh, that is attributed to Aristotle. Uh, who said this? Our buddy here, Aristotle, said that uh, in the in the um, case of all things which have several parts, and in which the totality is not, as it were, a mere heap, but the whole is something besides the parts. There is a cause. Now, this this uh, quote is commonly misquoted, uh, really, as uh, the sum is greater than the whole of the parts. But um, uh, really what he's saying here, the whole is something besides the parts. In other words, it's not necessarily greater, but it's different than. When we look at the, at the different parts that we have in critical media studies, the different critical lenses that we've examined, they are, they are all unique and important in their own right. But there's a whole that is something uh, else entirely. There's there's a whole of this idea of critical media studies, as we talked about in the first couple of videos in this series, to what is critical media studies and how do we do critical media studies in general. And, and we know that there's something more to it than just these individual lenses. Again, the individual lenses are great. They're, they're an important part of, of something, but, but there's a whole that is something else entirely outside of just um, those parts. Um, so uh, that's what I want to look at today. What's the whole that we've been looking? How do we pull all this together and think of it as a whole? Another way to think of it in a little more modern terms is if we've, we've taken a look, we've taken an entire engine apart. This is a car engine. We've taken the whole thing apart. We've examined each part. We've examined the head. We've examined the pistons. We've examined every, uh, every piece of this individually, this engine individually. But now that we've had a chance to look at those individual pieces, those individual lenses, we want to put it all together and see how the uh, see how the engine works all together. It's not just this collection of parts, but there's something else entirely that happens when we look at it as a whole. So that's what we're going to do. Let's just to, to review real quickly. We looked at a variety of different types of analysis and critical media studies uh, in a couple different categories here. If you followed along first, there were the theories of the media industries. These include things like Marxist analysis, organizational analysis, and pragmatic analysis that really have to do with the media industries, the way that uh, the, the kind of the business of media and how these things get created in the first place. And um, some of the different financial aspects and the, just the industry, the business of media in general. So we've looked at the theories that relate to those media industries. We also looked at some theories of media messages. How are, how are things communicated through the media, including things like rhetorical analysis, cultural analysis, psychoanalytic analysis, feminist analysis, and queer analysis. We've taken a look at all of those individual items, individual lenses. And so we've looked at critical media studies and how it operates operates through um, these different um, theories of messages and how we can be critical of those artifacts and, and examine those artifacts through the different ways that those messages are, are, are created from the, from the creation standpoint and also through the uh, interpretive a aspect of it. Um, so we just take, took a look at, uh, at the different messages. And then finally, we've taken a look a little bit at some of the different media audiences and discovered that the audience themselves is an important factor in examining these different media. So we looked at reception analysis. We looked at sociological analysis. We looked at erotic analysis and ecological analysis, all of which have to do with the audience's reaction and the, the various audience responses and the audience interactions with these different media. And what does that mean? What does that tell us? And as, as people who are examining this and looking at not only that artifact itself, but the impact of media on our culture uh, on a, in a broader sense and on just the individual audience members. So uh, we took a look at a variety of different things related to the media audiences. So we looked at all these different categories, industries, messages, and audiences, um, and looked at lenses within each of those series. Maybe the big question now, though, if we've taken a look at all these individual lenses, like I said, we've, we've got a handle on a lot of these, or we've been introduced at least to a lot of these uh, different individual uh, lenses. But the, the big question is, now what? You have all this new knowledge. You have all these new perspectives, right? You can see the media in a variety of different ways uh, than you could before, maybe, or at least a few that you have gained some insight on and, and really uh, have an, a new perspective on how we can examine um, the media and how we uh, understand the media that we're, we're, um, you know, taking in and that we're, we're exposed to on a daily basis. But 
Now what? What do we do with all this information? What do we do with these new perspectives? Well, I, I want to suggest a few here. There are a couple of common ways that we look to apply critical media studies and look to the application of critical media studies. Um, the first of which, the first level is media literacy, which is really just an understanding of what we mean um, by the or what, what, you know, where the media comes from, what the industry is that, that creates it, as we talked about those different theories of industry, but you know, who, who makes the, the, the idea that media is created by someone and that there is a point here. So there, there's a message there somewhere. So being aware of those things and not just being kind of this, you know, mindless vessel that takes in media and never really thinks about where it came from, what it might mean, or any other kind of, uh, you know, subtle message or subtextual message that may be coming through there, but just having some basic media literacy, understanding the basic industry of the media and the basic principles of media and the purpose of media uh, will give you that media literacy so that we can have just a, that foundational level of analysis and examination when we come across media. We can step beyond media literacy and get into what we call media resistance, right? Sometimes we look at things like um, culture jamming, right? what's called culture jamming, which is essentially just, you know, ways to kind of resist media and to push back against media, the, the you know, indicating we have an understanding of where this comes from, what you're trying to do, and we're going to push back, we're going to resist, we're going to use your tools really uh, against you in, in creating some of this resistance for the media. We see this sometimes in mainstream media. We see um, different programs push back or, or take uh, shots at that at mainstream media. Um, for example, those of you who may remember Stephen Colbert before he took over the uh, the late show after uh, David Letterman's retirement, before he took over that more mainstream show, he had a show in between being on the daily show where he started and the late night show. And he had this program called the Colbert Rapport. Right? And, uh, and it really was a, kind of a, a media resistance piece, almost kind of a culture jamming piece because he really played a personality. That character of Stephen Colbert was, uh, you know, a caricature of a mainstream conservative media personality, um, a little over serious and, and, uh, and said ridiculous things and, and was there for comedy, right? When it was on Comedy Central and it was, it was more educational than you might have thought, but at the same time, it really was a, a comedy program at heart. And uh, so the Colbert Report, though, taking aim at um, the different um, mainstream, especially conservative media programs, there is a form of media resistance. And then you have more explicit forms of what we would really call culture jamming. Um, the examples like this, which is obviously a play on the McDonald's uh, marches uh, or arches and uh, talking about you know, the, the associating McDonald's with weight gain and obesity just a general lack of health uh, associated with that, but really playing on the, the familiar images of the golden arches and, and the McDonald's sign and things. So, but, and even the phrase, you know, instead of I'm loving it, it's I'm gaining it. And uh, so um, you have some familiar things there, but, um, but um, really pushing back against the mainstream media um, in that way. Uh, another example of, of culture jamming here, I play on the Starbucks coffee um, uh, logo um, indicating, you know, just the, the, the high prices there and what you're paying a premium for that. And really that we're paying a premium for, for the logo that's on it, and, you know, a little bit for the coffee, but mostly for the logo uh, that's on the side. So you have different types of media resistance that you can get involved with, you know, pushing back against the use of media for maybe what you might consider less than ethical or less than savory uh, purposes. You can use that uh, in media itself to push back and provide some resistance there. Another way that we can apply critical media studies and a, and a really fuller understanding of the media and the impact that it can have is through media reform. We can look at media reform. Um, it, one avenue, for example, right now that's hot uh, on media reform. There's been uh, there's always media reform happening, but um, one in our current day and age, our present day and age, really has to do with. Um, uh, you know, sort of policing social media and should social media be policing itself? Should there be more governmental regulation of social media and what is and what is not allowed? Where's that balance between free speech and free expression and uh, the balance between, you know, responsible expression, you know, expression that's not going to be harmful to other people. Um, so um, should the, um, uh, platforms be policing this themselves? Should they be responsible for that themselves? Um, and surprisingly, many of them are arguing no. In fact, they're saying we don't really want 
um, the responsibility uh, of that. We would rather have the government come in and, and do some of this. I think should take some of the heat off of themselves. But, um, but so, you know, those types of things for media reform, we can get involved in that. We can get involved in, you, you know, different um, uh, standards and practices with the FCC and just, you know, making reforms in media. Now that we understand, you know, we've kind of pulled back the curtain. Right. And like in the Wizard of Oz, we've pulled back the curtain. We see what's happening in these media uh, outlets and things. So we can use that knowledge um, to enact media reform or fight for media reform that we see as necessary. But yeah, we can do any of these. We can do all of them. They're not mutually exclusive. It's not that you have to do um, all of them or you can only do one of them. You can do any combination of these. I think. You, but the point is now that we have an understanding of this, uh, of, of what's happening here with the media, uh, a deeper understanding, a more full understanding of the media, how it operates and, and how it impacts us as individuals and as a society that we ought to be more responsible about the way that we use that media, the way that we engage in media. And, uh, and so we ought to be on, on the, uh, on the front end here. On the, we ought to be the tip of the spear in helping people understand that and, and guiding those efforts. I hope that this uh, exploration and critical media studies, this, this whole series has been uh, uh, fruitful for you. I hope it's given you a, deep un a deeper understanding of the media and, and uh, um, where it comes from, how it's created, how we can engage in it and how we can um, provide analysis in that. But uh, more importantly, I think uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, as I said at the very beginning of the series, that, uh, that you've learned how to think. A little bit more and think differently and think more critically and see things from other perspectives Again, not that we have to agree with those things all the time but but that we can see things from other perspectives now we can understand that there there is a perspective being demonstrated in the media at all times and so it's our job as um, examiners of that media and and consumers of that media to try and identify okay what is this perspective and how does that affect the way that it's made and the way that it's interpreted and the way that it impacts our society so hopefully these are some of the things that you're more aware of now as we come to the conclusion of this particular series. As always, if you have any questions, uh, I hope that you'll feel free to email me any questions about critical media studies. I'd be happy to, to answer any questions that I can chat with you about any topics that, uh, that you still have questions about or, or comments over. Please feel free to email me and, and, and I'd be happy to chat about that with you. In the meantime, I hope you'll get out there and really utilize, you know, open the door here. Don't just look through the peephole uh, of, of, of what the media has to offer us, but open that door wide open so you can see the full picture and the full perspective perspective and have a much deeper understanding of the media, uh, both uh, the benefits and the potential um, uh, detriments to our life and just uh, so how media fits in as a piece of our um, overall lifestyle.